don't have a question, considering that that last video I put up, you know, you know, I had one particular question on that, but I got another question I've been using over since we on, you know, weird mixes of religion and state. What is it with screaming about this country is all about freedom and democracy and democracy rules and all that? But at the same time, you're also about supporting a system of complete totalitarianism and the authority of one particular being. How do you mix that? See, I really started thinking about that, especially after Obama became president, and all of a sudden you're finding all these people going completely ape shit because they're like, Oh, he's a socialist. He's going to completely dominate our country with socialist policies, and we're going to be a communist in place, and he's going to be a super dictator, and this is supposed to be ruled by the people, and they start forming fucking tea parties without even realizing what the original tea party was about. You know, and following the winds of... I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. The very first so-called Tea Party was sponsored by fucking Fox News, which is a major fucking corporation. How the hell is this by the people when a goddamn corporation helped to set up the whole freaking thing in the first place? And meanwhile, while that was going on, they were introducing a cyber bill that would allow them to get into your fucking um, computer shit anytime they fucking want. And if they see any piracy or any shit like that, you know, they can hold you accountable for it. In, you know, violating your own um, privacy. They could, you know, the, the bill they were trying to push forth, you came over with a laptop and they thought it was suspicious while you're going through an airport, they could check that shit for pirate, um, pirate shit. Interestingly enough, Fox never reported on that, but yet they're claiming that they're for the people, by the people, and they're against the administration. Think about that shit for a while. You know, you got all these people who are claiming that, you know, they're starting all these different town hall meetings and all this other bullshit about, oh, we're for the people, by the people, this and that and that. But the more you listen to these guys, the more you realize that they don't really care much about people power. Because once you really start talking about, well, why can't I live my life the way I want? No, because God said you had to do X, Y, and Z. You really don't have a choice in the matter. You have to bow down to this one primary being and do what the fuck he says. And you don't get a vote. <laughs> You don't get a vote, you don't get um, any type of say, there's no committee meeting, there's no town hall meetings for that shit, you don't get any um, tea parties to rebel against you know, this type of totalitarian rule, you gotta bow down or else. How do you mix that? And don't give me this shit about, well, when it comes to God, it's one system, but when it comes to this country, you know it's something else. You've been trying to shove your so-called Christian values down our throats in America for quite some time. If you were all about shoving your complete religious values here, we wouldn't even have a democracy. You'd put in one major guru, one major priest, we'd all be forced to follow Christian rule, and we wouldn't have any say-so in the matter. They wouldn't be putting things to a vote. You can't logically put a system where the people get to decide who rules, who governs, and what the laws are going to be. You can't mix a system like that with a system that says bow down to the supreme authority and only this supreme authority gets to dictate who rules and what the rules are going to be. And you just have to submit to it. How do you reconcile the two? The only way you can reconcile that is if you're too freaking brainwashed to realize that the two don't freaking go together. Either that or you're too freaking blind to realize that the two don't go together. It's only when you stop to think about it that it, you're like, wait, 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 huh? And they love to have their cake and eat it too. If a group of people happen to vote for something that they feel is against their religion or they don't like, then they'll go, well, this is wrong. Just because a bunch of people, you know, like this doesn't mean it's right. It's freaking wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, uh, my, uh, Bible says so, so it's wrong. So they're always going to argue on a so-called ethical aspect and try to fight against it. Let's look at abortion. Lots and lots and lots and lots of women are like, damn it, you can't tell me what to do with my body. But these guys will say, we don't really give two shits what you say. This book says, well, actually the book doesn't say anything about religion, but... You know, since their religious leader is all about preserving life, we'll kill these guys who don't believe in what you believe, but support life. Um, you know, we can have abortion, so they argue on that basis. So in this sense, they're arguing on the basis of ethics, their supposed ethics. But when it comes down to a bunch of people voting, I mean, so when it comes down to um, people getting angry that a whole bunch of people voted against a civil rights issue, let's say gays trying to you know get the right to marry you know each other 
Well, majority rules, motherfuckers. That's democracy for you. This is a fucking ethical issue. You can't fucking vote on civil rights. We don't give a fuck. Most of these people voted for it. So there you go, democracy, yay! You guys love having your cake and eating it too. And you wonder why people call you hypocrites. <laughs> it's because you are. You're basically, all, you're always trying to have your cake and eat it too. You're always trying to find ways to jump, you know, ship from one system to another in order to suit your needs. Not realizing that you're constantly being a pain in the ass to other people who just want to be left alone. They haven't been bothering you. They aren't fucking with you. They're not trying to mess with you. They just want to live their own lives. Now you, because you're constantly trying to get into the lives of other people, feel that, oh, you have to mess with people. And then when they complain, then you, can, you complain that you're being persecuted because people have had enough of your shit. It doesn't work that way, guys. You're not the victims here. You haven't really been the victims here for quite some time. You guys have been doing most of the bullying. All these atheists keep persecuting us. Have you looked at the polls? This country is still a highly religious country. Even if you're not Christian, you're probably Jewish. If you're not Jewish, you're probably Muslim. Or some other particular religion. Atheists and agnostics? They're a small number. They're not persecuting you. You kind of have to be in a position of power and start acting with other people's lives. And you guys, the last time I checked, got most of the freaking power. Otherwise, the laws that are being passed wouldn't be passing. And people wouldn't be allowed to vote on the civil rights of other American citizens. Because you guys have that power, you're able to. It's funny to me how you guys have been standing in the way of progress for a long time simply because you think that it's effing with your religious views. And it's funny how even the smallest lines from even the so-called most well-meaning people give away what's really in your head. There was a debate, and I think they turned it into a film, it was called Collision. Um, damn, I don't know why. Christopher Hitchens and there was another American priest, they were having this debate on, you know, the validity of religion and faith and does it have any value in human society. If I, when I remember the name, I'll put it in the, um, the text description over there. At the, I remember that I was listening to um, an interview with both of these guys about that debate. And at the end, they were asked a question. If there was only one person left on earth of the other side, what would you do? Christopher Hitchens says that if there was only one Christian or religious person left, I wouldn't want to try to convert him. You know, it's because, you know, he, he still saw that religious thought, since it was the first way that people were trying to describe their world, it's worth examining so we can see where we came from. The priest said, if there was only one atheist left, he'd baptize him. Do you know what that says? That while the atheist, Hitchens, was willing to live with difference, the religious guy wasn't. He can't have differences. He can't tolerate somebody else thinking something different than him. They have to be brought in line. And this is ultimately why religious people are fought against in any civilized society. Because you people have never believed in tolerance and you've never believed in freedom. You don't believe in democracy. You believe in totalitarianism. You believe in everyone marching to the same beat. So don't pretend that you believe in democracy and freedom. That's not what your religion has ever been about. You just hijacked it for your own ends. <laughs>